All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this over-the-top, postcard-perfect summer day in the Finger Lakes of New York here at Bugs in a Jar Farm as the monsoons finally blow out of here. And it doesn't even look like we have very much wildfire smoke today. We can actually see some blue skies 3,000 miles from the wildfires. But it is Friday morning. That would be July 23rd, 2021. So much to Sancho Panza's horror, that means it is time for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where we go once again over here to mongabay.com to check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there at Manga Bay to see what is on their minds as they go through their laundry list of the myriad ways this planet has been heading into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour while we talk about critical race theory. Yes. All right, so I read their number one leadoff article and, and was having a blast from the past. Let's check in with the number one thing on Rhett's mind today. Planned Brazil to Peru highway threatens one of Earth's most biodiverse places. Yes, this is Sierra Divisor National Park on Brazil's border with Peru is home to numerous endemic animals and more than a thousand plant species, but now faces a double threat from a planned highway through the middle of it and a bid to downgrade its protected status. Yes a protected national park in Brazil. There, there's a contradiction in terms. The downgrade from national park to environmental protection area would paradoxically open up this Andean to Amazon transition region to deforestation, cattle ranching, and mining activities that are currently prohibited in the national park, but there's no reason you cannot have deforestation, cattle ranching, and mining in an environmental protection area. Yes, and then we have the highway project <clears throat> meant to give Brazil another land route to the Pacific Ocean via Peru has been embraced by the government of President Jair Bozonero which has already taken first steps towards <coughs> its construction. Gee, uh, you will not believe that indigenous leaders say they have not been consulted about this highway as required by law and had not been told about the proposed downgrade of the park, both of which will have negative socio-environmental impacts this reminds me, you know, in 2009, I was down there in Brazil uh, working on my story about what was going on in Peru 12 years ago, and I was writing about the last highway, which was the first highway, uh, you know, the very last section of the very first highway, which was being completed in 2009 when I was down there. And I sent Rhett my interpretation of what was going on. And he tells me, he goes, Sam, I really enjoyed reading uh, your interpretation of what is going on down there. But of course, I cannot publish it in Manga Bay. <laughs> I might, some, sometimes I'll have to come back and read. Uh, you can... That's from my book, Peruvian Plunge, which I think you can still find. I think Barnes & Noble, uh, Peruvian Plunge, they put some other weird name as the author on that. I can't remember. But if you want to read my account of uh, what was going on in the Peruvian Amazon 12 years ago. Okay, let's stay down there in Brazil. <clears throat> as Soy Frenzy 
soy frenzy. This is a new word for the glossary of the collapse as soy frenzy grips Brazil. Deforestation closes in on indigenous lands. Wow. A large swath of rainforest has been cleared and burned on the edge of the Wawi indigenous territory in the Brazilian Amazon. Yes, the fire is just one of many being set to clear land for soy cultivation, much of it legally mandated as demand for the crop sees growers push deeper into the rainforest and even into indigenous and protected areas. I just bought the biggest jug of soy uh, soy sauce I've ever bought in my life yesterday. No doubt I have been doing my part to be part of soy frenzy. Enforcement against forest destruction has been undermined at the federal level thanks to budget cuts and loosened restrictions by Presidente Jair Bozonero. Yes. And don't forget the use of agrochemicals on soy plantations. I think Brazil, I, I think Brazil uses more chemicals, you know, sprays more chemicals on what used to be the Amazon rainforest than any other country on the planet. I believe that's true, but I would have to double check my former ass. All right, we have a uh, we have a uh, an article about invasive water hyacinth. Good Lord, which I just I just went on Craigslist. <laughs> and bought some water hyacinth and water lettuce. I just set out this uh, in my own uh, 50, 100 feet from where I'm sitting. Uh, I, uh, I am uh, spreading water hyacinth here at Bugs in a Jar Farm because it's so beautiful. So this is looking at Kenya being overrun uh, by this uh, water hyacinth trying to figure out what to do with it and so they've come up with the idea of uh, to burn it for biofuel. <laughs> now this, this actually this is one uh, this is one plant uh, material that I do support burning for uh, burning for biofuel Yes. <clears throat> Though to be truly effective, these various projects would need to be upscaled. Do you think so? All right. What? Back to Brazil. What is going on with the forest fires? You will not believe this one. Brazil government faces heat over plan that could under-report forest fires. Imagine that the Brazilian government of higher Bozonero <coughs> under-reporting forest fires. The Brazilian government faces a new controversy over how it monitors and ultimately responds to forest fires. Uh, so anyway, this is too complicated. <coughs> Uh, about how they <clears throat> plan to change the system. It has raised concerns among scientists and environmentalists that the comprehensive and reliable data sets from the present system will be quashed in favor of underreported deforestation and fire information from the new system. Do you think so? <clears throat> Critics say this is not the first time the Bozo Nero administration has tried to undermine, you know, all this. Anyway, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel. So each week they put out a YouTube. So if you go over to Rhett's YouTube channel, his YouTube of the week, I love it. He, what he has is a picture of a big logging truck rolling through some deforested jungle. 
and the name of his video this week is Controversial Conservation, where uh, Rhett asked the question, can a logging concession in Guatemala help fight illegal deforestation? Rhett, just in case you're listening to this, it's a simple answer to your question. Can a logging concession in Guatemala help fight illegal deforestation? The answer to your question is no, Rhett. A logging concession in Guatemala cannot help fight illegal deforestation. Well, what it can probably do, as one of your own uh, reporters was writing about, they probably will make the illegal deforestation legal deforestation. So they just make it illegal to bulldoze the trees. I mean, they just make it legal instead of illegal, and so everything's fine. I think you know the answer to your own question. I shudder to watch your video this week, Rat, to see if you suggest on any level that a logging concession in Guatemala will help fight deforestation. Okay, did you realize, see, this is why I depend on, uh, on Manga Bay to uh, educate me. Do you realize that the Great Barrier Reef is in danger? Huh, I have never thought about this. The Great Barrier Reef is in danger. <clears throat> so UNESCO, the United Nations, has issued a draft decision to list the Great <clears throat> Barrier Reef as, quote, in danger due to multiplying threats. Of course, the Australian government is absolutely flipping out that the United Nations would suggest that their biggest tourist attraction is in danger and is fighting tooth and nail. I guess uh, Australia is claiming the Great Barrier Reef is not in danger. Uh, <clears throat> this is a commentary by some guy living down there named John Tanzer. Quote, my plea to the government and to my fellow Australians, don't let politics thwart science. Don't fight the diagnosis, fight the threats. All right, we have a new study on protected areas. <clears throat> so according to this new research, protected areas keep adjacent lands safer, but face losing their own protection. Safeguarding nature in one area can displace harmful activities such as illegal logging or mining into another area, a phenomenon known as leakage or spillover. But how big is the problem? So, the first systematic review of studies examining the effects of protected areas around the globe on their surroundings found that less than 12% showed evidence of leakage or, sp or spillover, while the majority did reduce deforestation in surrounding areas. Um, Experts say environmental and regulatory, regulatory rollbacks that loosen restrictions on land use, shrink boundaries, or altogether eliminate protections pose a much greater threat to the Amazon than leakage. Yes, and efforts should focus on keeping protected areas permanently protected. You know, like the opening, what was the opening? Uh, Yes, that was our opening story. Our second story, where was it? I've already forgot. Uh, the story I just did five minutes ago about the national park being delisted. 
Okay, enough of that BS. Let's see. We have the Philippines announcing a new fisheries management system. Yes, the Philippines has introduced a new fisheries management framework to curb illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. Yes, that's like Sancho Panza is going to be introducing a new chipmunk management system here at Bugs in a Jar to curb illegal, unreported, and unregulated chipmunk harvesting at Bugs in a Jar. Are you working on your new chipmunk management system here? Anyway, after that little sick laugh, uh, let's see. This one is way too technical to try to explain. All right, we have parasitic hitchhikers on manta rays. Yes. All right, we have a Corona Panic one, so for anybody not wanting to listen to Corona Panic news, just fast forward for a minute. <clears throat> Indonesia eyes less severe fire season this year, but Corona Panic could turn it deadly. Uh, oh, they're talking about the haze. Here we go again. You know, every year we get the... The Hayes report. <clears throat> anyway, we're going to. Uh, all right. <clears throat> we are now paying Sub Saharan Africa to protect its forest. Gabon, is that a. Is it Gabon or Gabon? Becomes the first African country to get paid for protecting its forest. Yes, so Gabon uh, has received its first $17 million payment of a pledged $150 million from Norway. Uh, Gabon, to this day, has 88% forest cover. There you go. Uh, and they're attributing, this is weird, so guys, you, you uh, decide uh, whether to hit the BS detected button. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm taking this figure with, with a huge grain of salt. <clears throat> According to... Uh, According to Manga Bay here, <clears throat> Gabon still has 88% of its forest cover remaining and has limited annual deforestation to less than 0.1% over the last 30 years, in large part possible due to oil revenues supporting the economy. Yes. Uh, but now their oil reserves are running low, so it is, it is Gabon's oil drilling that has given it the money to protect its forest, but now it's running out of oil. And so guess, uh, since there's no more money to be had in oil, guess where they're looking? Uh, but Norway, you know, who this money was made off of oil drilling, you know, to save the planet Norway, they, what they do is they, they take all of this money they make from oil drilling in the Arctic and probably from selling whale meat, uh, and they pay other countries to save the planet. Anyway, enough of all of that. Uh, <clears throat> okay. 
Did you realize that deforestation and wildfires are taking a toll on the Amazon rainforest? As it becomes hotter and drier, drought and high temperatures amplify the destructive effects of deforestation and wildfires across the Amazon basin tree species adapted to drier conditions are becoming more prevalent and in the central Amazon savannas have already replaced floodplain forest in just the past few decades. Do you think so? We are watching what this is, what they're describing is the Amazon rainforest tipping over into a hotter, drier savanna. There's another way. This is the Amazon rainforest in the middle of uh, going through a tipping point. Uh, what is going on with African wild dogs? Rising temperatures further threaten already endangered African wild dogs. Researchers examined three populations of wild dogs to understand if high heat correlates with increased mortality in two of the three sites. There was a strong relationship between extreme temperatures and increased mortality of the dogs. Do you think so? Add this to intentional human killings of dogs, human setting snare traps to trap dogs, humans running over the dogs, and di disease transmission from domesticated dogs. Yes. And now add heat waves. All right, here is, we just heard human wild dogs in Africa. Here is humans and crocodiles uh, running into each other in the Philippines. Um, all right, crocodile attacks on humans have increased in recent years, yes, which experts attribute to the encroachment of humans into crocodile habitats, particularly mangrove swamps, which are going to disappear anyway. Uh, okay, here, did you realize there were any Javan leopards still remaining. Uh, the Javan leopard is critically endangered and now relegated to small patches of forest scattered about the heavily populated island of Java. Uh, kiss goodbye the Javan leopard. Okay, I, uh, if Ben or I were still doing interviews, this might be a good person to talk to. This is Henry Mance. I don't, uh, asking, uh, or answering the question, what is your real footprint on the animal world? Henry Mance's debut book, How to Love Animals in a Human-Shaped World, considers humanity's complex relationship with animals in terms of the food we put in our plate on our plates and activities we partake in that directly affect animals' lives. I don't know if they're talking mostly about wild animals or domestic animals, obviously domestic animals, we eat them. And a lot of people eat the wild animals. Um, the author grapples with some difficult questions such as whether hunting 
can actually be an ethical activity and whether zoos have any conservation value. He concludes that animals should be treated with more respect and kindness than we currently give them. You need to give your fellow animal a belly rub. And that we should look for ways to redefine our relationship with animal kind for ethical and environmental reasons. Okay, we started off with some new highway imperiling animals in Brazil and Peru. Now we have a new road imperiling tree kangaroos in New Guinea. This is a new highway in the Torricelli Mountains of northwestern Papua New Guinea, home to a wide variety of wildlife, including three species of tree kangaroos. Recently, construction of a new road that could be used by loggers has pushed closer to the border of a proposed protected area. Yes. Uh. Now, environmentalists fear that the road could jeopardize the kangaroos. Imagine that. All right. Here we go. We have biogas from animal manure. Yes. Anyway, uh, enough of biogas from animal manure. Uh, didn't we just talk about, no, that was the Philippines fisheries. So let's look at what's going on with the Indonesian uh, fishery managers. Indonesian former fisheries minister jailed for bribery. Yes, this is, I did not realize there were lobsters in Indonesia. Indonesia's former fisheries ministry has been sentenced to five years in prison for taking bribes to lift a ban on lobster larvae exports in 2020. Lobster larvae. I did not even realize that lobsters had a larval stage. Uh... Anyway, moving on from lobster larvae. Uh, okay, this is the latest update on that cargo ship that sank off of Sri Lanka. They are now tallying the toll on marine life from the Express Pearl sinking. The recent spate of marine species deaths and Sri Lanka points to the burning of the sinking and the, we've, uh, you know, the Pearl Express with all those hazardous chemicals. Uh, no one will ever know and that will keep going for years. Here we go. Uh, here's the pipe dream of the week. Brazil prosecutors seek ban on all gold mining in hard-hit Amazonian region. Yes, gold mining activities may be suspended in the southwest of Pará state in the Brazilian Amazon. Yes, good luck on that. Uh, experts say Brazilian law leaves the door open to gold laundering by permitting miners to self-declare the origin of their gold without requiring any verification. Do you think so? Uh, we actually had this one making, breaking through to the mainstream media. Do you believe the Corindo Palm Oil Corporation has been kicked off 
the Forest Stewardship Council. <laughs> yes, uh, imagine that, the, the, the very notion of a palm oil corporation sitting on something called a Forest Stewardship Council. Oh, anyway, the Forest Stewardship Council. Don't get me going. We just talked about gold laundering. Now we're going to hear about, I guess, tree laundering. We're talking about IKEA, which is a laundering machine. Laundering machine. Furniture giant IKEA implicated in logging protected Siberian forest. The world's biggest furniture retailer, IKEA, has for years sold children's furniture made from wood linked to illegal logging in protected forest in Russia, an earth site investigation has found. Yes, this is the brand's popular Sundvik children's range are full of Siberian tiger blood, I guess. Anyway, imagine that. Here is how eDNA is going to curtail the freshwater extinction crisis. Yes. We are going to save the freshwater fish with eDNA. I don't even know what that means. Uh, did you realize, this is yet another book, that animal rights will be part of our DNA? Yes. Animal rights will be... I'm going to enjoy some of the, these pigs denied their rights becoming part of my DNA in about 20 minutes. Okay, what is going on with the vaquita? How many years have we been uh, tracking the, the, uh, the final, when will the last vaquita finally swim into eternity? Mismanaged to death. Mexico opens up the very last vaquita habitat to fishing. The Mexican government has eradicated a no-tolerance zone in the upper Gulf of California meant to protect the critically endangered vaquita porpoise. The former refuge will now be open for fishing and there will be minimal, read no, monitoring and enforcement of illegal activity. Conservationists say this move will certainly lead to the extinction of the vaquita porpoise, whose numbers have recently dwindled down to nine individual porpoises left on the planet. So we're now in the single digits and the Mexican government has said to hell with it, uh, just let the planet eaters have the last nine vaquitas, just wrap it up with the vaquita story. So we have the final nail in the coffin on the vaquita porpoise, so finally in a couple of weeks I can come back on here and announce the vaquita por porpoise is now extinct so those people in, Ch in China can eat swim bladders from a sea bass, which they're also driving extinct. Okay, uh, good Lord, guys, I could go on and on with this. I'm just a after the uh, final nail in the coffin on the vaquita. All right, we now have an Israel to United Arab Emirates pipeline deal is an invitation to disaster for globally 
important corals. Yep, we can kiss. I didn't realize there was a coral reef still left over there, but there won't be in a year or two. Okay. Did you realize this is the UN's decade on ecosystem restoration? All right, the 2020s are the UN decade on ecosystem restoration. I was totally unaware of this. We are your, your old chronicler of the collapse of a planet. We are a year and a half, and I'm just now learning that the United Nations has declared the 2020s the decade on ecosystem restoration, as Sancho Panza has declared the 2020s the decade on chipmunk restoration at Bugs in a Jar Farm. How is your chipmunk restoration plan at Bugs in a Jar Farm coming, Sancho? I think you should go advise the United Nations. Uh, good Lord, please. Uh, <laughs> this post is a commentary uh, reflecting the views of the authors, not necessarily Manga Bay. All right, you will not believe this, guys. And, and uh, again, this is why I depend on Manga Bay, because I never would have realized this. Would you believe that Chinese cities, Chinese cities are among the biggest emitters of greenhouse gases on the planet, study finds. Uh, Chinese cities occupy 2% of the planet's surface, yet account for 70% of annual carbon dioxide emissions. Yes. Uh, wow, you will not believe this one. Killings and invasions escalate in fight for land in Brazil. Uh, mounting up how many people being gunned down. Uh, all right, don't forget the Arctic. We're going to wind up in the Arctic, all of this talk about Brazil. Gee, as Arctic warms, scientists wrestle with its climate tipping point. From the Amazon to the Arctic, the planet is tipping over. A leaked version of the newest science report from the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change warms of looming, potentially catastrophic tipping points for Arctic sea ice melt, tundra thaw, meaning perma finally the UN is admitting that the tundra is thawing. I do not believe it. We have history being made, uh, a, a UN IPCC report actually mentioning melting permafrost, I think, for the first time. Uh, here is a new word, savannification, savannification of the Amazon rainforest and other planetary environmental thresholds beyond which recovery may be impossible. Yes, but what are tipping points and how does one pinpoint what causes them or when they will occur. Yes. In the Arctic, one working definition of a climatic tipping point is when nearly all of the sea ice disappears in summer, causing the dreaded blue ocean event. Yes, so, uh, Anyway, I do not believe it. Uh, the IPCC will actually, let's see what they say 
about the melting permafrost, the savannification of the Amazon rainforest, and uh, all the rest of it. And we can't wait to see what they're going to come up with for their solutions. And, and guys, one more time, when I make all of my ironic, hilarious remarks about the UN, I am not talking about the scientist working for the United Nations. The only problem with the scientist working for the United Nations is they are way too conservative uh, about how screwed this planet is. We I had a rant about that recently about uh, anybody who calling a UN scientist alarmist is like somebody calling Joe Biden a socialist. <clears throat> they do not know the meaning of the word of alarmist. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to get into another UN rant. I am not talking trash about the people putting together the science. It is the policy makers talking about the solutions that are a sick, twisted joke. With that uh, disclaimer out of the way, <clears throat> I got to wrap this up. Uh, because a little dog and I need to head out to my organic garden, which is being attacked by Japanese beetles. So I'm going to go over there and declare war against an invasive species and wonder where the hell this insect apocalypse that everyone keeps talking about is. Because other than honeybees, I have not seen one honeybee on bugs in a jar. Other than honeybees, there is no insect apocalypse going on this year <clears throat> at Bugs in a Jar Farm as much as I wish there was. All right, little dog, we're done, and I suggest you get out there and attack the invasive species of your choice while you still can. Bye, guys. Did you survive that, little dog? You did pretty good this week. You weren't too squirmy.